Hello. I'm going to walk you through how I use my hand-painted textures from Atelier Textures at pictorialistphoto.com to alter my photographs. I'm doing this to create a painterly pictorialist style image. The process can be complicated or it can be really simple and I'm going to show you a couple of the most common tricks that I use in creating my images. I shoot all my photographs in raw format so I'm going to open this one. I've chosen one of a straw flower and I'm going to open it up in Adobe Camera Raw. This is how the image looks originally. It's a fairly good image and doesn't really need much processing to bring out the best in it. What I'm going to do is increase the brightness a little bit just to give the image more pop. I'm going to take down the contrast because I want a low contrast, kind of dreamy image. And I don't want the highlights to become too strong or the shadows, although there really aren't. The shadows aren't very strong in this image to begin with. But in here, the, sh the highlights are fairly bright and I do want to watch out that I don't clip them. So I've done that. I'm going to increase the clarity a bit which you can see that also increases the contrast slightly. I'm going to take my sharpening up to about a hundred. That's my standard sharpening that I apply to almost every image unless I'm going as purposely want a soft image. Um, I'm going to open this up full size so that I can check for chromatic aberration and to check my noise. And I don't really have much noise. I'm just going to pop that up a bit, make sure there isn't any. That's also sort of a standard setting that I use. Um, luminance is 33, color 21. And I'll take that back down and just make sure it looks good. And that's all the adjustments I'm going to apply in Adobe Camera Raw. So I'll go ahead and open this up in Photoshop. Oops, you can see I've already got an image there. I'm going to show you that one next. So at this stage, I might apply further tweaks to the images and using curves adjustments, or I might alter colors or something like that slightly. But in this image, I don't want to do anything. All I'm going to do is bring in my texture. And I've chosen Victorian paper to show you today. This is a subtle paper texture that has some vignetting on it to darken the edges. And if you use your move tool while holding down the shift key on a Windows based system, this will center your texture on your photo. And it's a little bit smaller than my image size, so I'll just drag it to increase the size. Click OK. And now we can change the blend modes. And this is the real trick to creating textured images. It, when you open up your blend modes in your layer palette, you'll see an array of choices here. The most common ones I use are Multiply, Screen, Overlay, Soft Light, Hard Light, and Vivid Light. I will sometimes use Color or Linear Burn, but that's about it. Now that's just how I work. You would want to experiment with all of the different settings to see what they do, see how they affect your image, and, and choose one that fits your style. So I'm going to start up here at Multiply and see what that does. And that really, any of the um, blend modes in, in this section, the Dark and Multiply, Color Burn, Linear Burn, Dark and Color, those will all darken the tones in your image. So I've applied Multiply. It makes the image too dark. Sometimes that's what you're going to want, sometimes not. You can always try and do a curves and bring your uh, tones back up and lighten them. And so what I want to do is just show you how this would compare to some of the other blend modes. So I'm going to create a merged layer of this so that we can go back and look at it later. And I'm going to delete that curve because we don't actually want that. 
I know that screen mode is going to just lose the image, so I'm not even going to consider that. Overlay, and let's compare how overlay was to the multiply. See, there's not a lot of difference. This just makes, overlay makes the image brighter. And now soft light, you've got the texture, it's not as strong, and the light hasn't been adjusted much. It's changed it in or here around where the fib netting was, but that's about it. The center of the flower is still pretty much the same tones and values. And if you compare that, there's not a lot of difference, but in here, the effect around your edges is much more pronounced. So this is a matter of personal taste. I'm trying to go for a soft, dreamy look for the image, so I'm going to leave it at soft light. And we'll just look at a couple of the other modes just to see how they would look. Here's hard light. You've really lost your image because the image is kind of soft, low contrast. Using hard light is just too strong for this image. Vivid light, same thing. Linear, same thing. Those are just horrible. So I'm going to leave it at soft light, and that's it. I'm done. I don't need to make any more adjustments on this image.